My explorations with human design as a projector, I have gradually shifted from looking at my human design chart to looking to and understanding my design as a human. I'm going to explain a little bit more of what that means to me and why that was helpful. I want to slip this in here first. If you're getting a lot of benefit from studying your human design chart and you know, you know, with that inner authority we've talked about, that that's right for you and continue to do it no matter what I or anyone else says. I am offering you something that's been helpful for me that I think might also be helpful for you. But if it's not, just discard. So what happens a lot of times, what happened for me and what happens for other people I see when they encounter their human design is that they try to understand it and there's a lot of complex information there. There's a lot of information there. It's a, there are many, many rabbit holes to go down. And then they try to figure it out so they can get it right. And I think this is one of the challenges we have as humans that does not serve us. Trying to get our humanness right as if it can be done wrong. And usually what we mean by right and wrong is it's right if everything goes my way and it's wrong if it doesn't work out. That's not on offer. Predicting the future and making sure that everything you do works out, I've yet to see that ever be the case. I think in an uncertain world, we have something better. And we don't find it inside of our human design chart. We find it inside of our design as a human. So rather than looking for the rules of inner authority and strategy, I'm inviting you to look before them inside of you, to look beyond them, to the human that you are and to what we have in common as human beings. What is our design as a human? We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And there are two primary things I want to call your attention to that are in your design. So one, as a human, you are, I am, designed to feel what I am thinking. You don't have to go very far for an example of this. If I ask you to recall something that irritates you, you will, within seconds, probably be able to bring something to mind. We can call that a thought that feels a little irritating. You feel what you think. And that's exactly how it's supposed to work. And as we do this, we feel thinking. Thinking moves through us. This is thinking not just our mental thoughts, but the energy of the universal mind that comes through our personal mind, which we call thought. And with it, we can feel. And with it, we can create an experience and a meaning of our reality. And that's a power that we have that's built into our design as a human. Now, what's interesting about this thinking is that how we know the quality of our thinking by how it feels. So just like my arm has a certain feeling, a thought, thought has a certain feeling, it feels a certain way. And if that thought feels expansive, open, curious, hopeful, light, we know that it's taking us places that are positive. It's creating our worlds in a way that's beautiful. But if that thought is constrictive, heavy, tense, whatever variation of insecure, then it's taking us away from a creative use of thought. Neither one is good or bad. That's exactly how it's supposed to work. So when you feel your thinking, what it's telling you, the feeling that you have, 
is the quality of the thinking you have in the moment that you're giving your attention to. The misunderstanding happens when we look out on the world and think that when I feel bad, whatever I'm seeing is causing that. It is not our circumstances, but what we're thinking. But what you're thinking in this moment that's creating the experience you're having. So this is where we can tie this into one of the basic elements of human design, and that's your inner authority, because human design tells us that your thoughts don't tell you what to do, that they are not a good guide, and most of us don't know this as a human. The only thing our thoughts tell us is what, by what they feel, the quality of the thinking we have in the moment, whether it's helpful or whether it's not. That's it. There's no indication from our thinking and our feelings about what we should therefore do. So where do you get that information? Well, that's the second piece of our design as a human. And that is this thing that human design talks about as your inner authority, that inner knowing, your wisdom. It is different from your thoughts and feelings. It is often quieter. Sometimes it feels neutral. It doesn't scream at you. Sometimes it's firm. But it is somewhat separate and often detached from whatever it is that we're thinking and feeling. And I use an example of this one that was a, was a teacher to me years ago when, when I knew, and this was coming from inside my guidance, that it was time to leave my marriage. I had all kinds of thinking and feeling about it, every kind of thinking and feeling you can imagine, from fear to excitement to doubt and insecurity and every variation, but I knew. And the knowing was different. The knowing was quiet. And that's the part of our design that guides us. It does not mean that everything will work out perfectly because it's real time. It's an inner compass that in the moment directs you what to do and is responsive to new things that happen in your environment in every moment. So it's for now. And when you shift to an understanding of your design as a human, you start to see where choice lives, that it's actually in us to notice what we're doing with our thinking, that thinking that creates our experience, that thinking that makes up the world that we live in, the apparent reality we see. It's up to us to choose that. And we can influence that, not control it, but influence it. And when we're uncertain of what to do, we know where to look. We know to wait until we're calm, until those emotions have passed, and look to that knowing for our guidance, for our direction. And that no matter what choices we make, no matter what happens, our design is perfect. So if, if you find this interesting and you'd like to follow my journey in spiritual business and personal exploration, I encourage you to join my email list. I send out a weekly Wildspire email with stories and unmarketing experiments and links to videos and articles and podcasts like this one. Thanks for finding your way here.